personally that we all bow our heads and humble our spirits. We start to hope. Almighty God, creator of the heavens and the earth, master of the universe, we seek your name in this moment, in this hour. We ask that you shine upon us your mercy and your grace, that you invoke your spirit within us as we invoke the name of Prince Asiel, as we continue to lift up a man that we know is not dead, but he is very much alive. A man that is alive. We've got to change. Everything must change. You and me, we've got to change. This world, this world has to change. Yes, everything must change.
תהילים כ"ג מזמור לדוד יהוה רועי לא אחסר בנאות דשא ירביצני על מי מנוחות ינהלני נפשי ישובב וינחני במעגלי צדק ולמען שמו גם כי אלך בגי צל מוות לא עיר הרע כי אתה עמדי שבטך ומשענתך המה ינחמוני תערוך לפניי שולחן נגד צורריי. דישנתי בשמן ראשי, כוסי רוויה, אך צהוב וחסד ירדיפוני כל ימי חיי. ושבתי בבית יהוה לאורך ימים. There's a warm wind blowing in Demona tonight. The stars are shining bright. Says everything's all right. The world is ours. God is placed at our feet. I'm enjoying your beauty and your spirit so sweet and if there's perfection this must be Heaven, heaven in your eyes, eyes, walking with you under the Israel skies, under the Israel skies. Under the Israel skies, under the Israel skies, your beauty surpasses any I know. Well, there's a peace in your smile, a love in your glow, queen of my life, woman of my soul. Well, if there's anything you want tonight, the world is your home. And if there is perfection, this must. 
must be Heaven in your eyes Walking with you Under the air Ever fair air Like this Tonight, under these real skies, <laughs> under these real skies. Prince Asi Yochai, Yochai, Yochai. It's a black genius and talent. And Prince was truly a testament to that fact. It's critically important when a Lord calls home a strong black man, one who stood tall his whole life in his commitment to creating and highlighting black excellence. We must gather in humble rever reverence and celebration to a life well lived. A life lived not for himself, but for the benefit of all black people. As a proud son of the South Side, Prince spent much of his life supporting black people here in Chicago and truly around the world. He was a courageous freedom fighter and passionate religious leader who strongly believed that people were put on this earth to love and serve one another beliefs that were consistent with the scriptures of the Old Testament. These beliefs and a strong faith distinguished him in our city and around the world and made him an incredibly instrumental in bringing Chicago's black Hebrew-Israelite community together. And outside of our city, Prince was known as an incredible international ambassador of the African Hebrew-Israelite nation of Jerusalem. <clears throat> If you don't know his story, and you should, I commend you <clears throat> the beautiful um, obituary and history and biography in Indigo Magazine, uh, written by Hermaine Hartman, who is here today. Um, it is a beautiful legacy to him. We know that Prince was also a successful entrepreneur and businessman. Consul General of Israel, Yinam Cohen, is deeply sorry that he could not be here today, but he has uh, written a letter that he would like for me to read on his behalf. In the midst of your mourning, I want to express both personally and on behalf of the State of Israel our deepest condolences for the loss of Prince Asiel. He was a remarkable leader whose spiritual passion for building communities took him to the southern city of Dimona, Israel. His sons and daughters have gallantly served in the Israeli Defense Forces. His community have formed the warmly called Village of Peace, now in the thousands. In Israel, they are known for their spiritual discipline, their musical talent, and vegan culinary excellence, a little piece of which was brought to Chicago in Solvich City. Prince Asiel has been a cherished friend of the Israeli consulate in Chicago for many decades. The news of his passing is felt both by current and former diplomats. Prince's vision for connecting black America, Africa, and Israel was unlike any other. And I know that we're not alone in this sentiment, having seen the local community's embrace of Prince Asiel. May you find consolation and strength in the outstanding legacy of your loved one. And as you continue his legacy, now more than ever, May your hands be strengthened. Our hearts are with you, local and global family of Prince Asiel. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm Rabbi Hartman. 
what I said. I just, you know, wasn't that important. I, I'm Please, sorry. No problem. Shalom Aleichem. Assalamu As Aleichem. To all of my friends, faith leaders, religious leaders that are here and joining us today in celebrating the life of my friend, Prince Asiel ben Yisrael. We are indeed thankful for his life and for his capacity to share. And he indeed shared so much. And I have one minute and I simply want to say this blessing on behalf of each one of you for Prince Asiel. It is the priestly blessing that is written in the book of Numbers, the sixth chapter and the 22nd verse. Yebarecha Adonai Yishmarecha. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Ya'er Adonai Panabalecha Vechutnecha. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yasa Adonai Yasim Lecha Shalom. May the Lord bless and keep each of us and give us all peace. God bless you to the family and God be with you in these days. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, minister. Thank you. Every dignitary, family, mom, my Shalami, Shaki, Shalami, Yana. Okay. I'm going to read the portion in the uh, obituary about the personal life uh, with my dad, our father. So I'm going to kind of skip through it. And as Dr. Luck said, you can read it in its entirety. Little did Mary and Archie Brown Sr. know that within the di divine creation of God that they named Warren, born April 30th, 1941, lived the heart and soul of a prince, a liberator, and a deliverer. One of eight children, including Gloria, Calvin, Gladys, Elaine, Archie, Sterling, and Lily, born in Chicago, the city known as the Jewel of the Midwest, would indeed be a fitting place for the birth of a prince. He quickly distinguished himself in his community as a young man filled with passion and purpose caring for those in his community, looking after his siblings and his mother. Attending Dunbar High School, Prince Asiel excelled in his studies and became the president of his senior class, exhibiting amazing leadership qualities very early, indicated that he would be a force to be reckoned with. Prince Asiel was listed as one of the 10 outstanding students in Chicago Public Schools class of 1959. My life, my way. His Excellency Prince Asiel was the consummate symbol of strength, courage, and wisdom. His movement across the world became one that was spiritually resolute, not based on religion, but righteousness, having an undaunted commitment to others. Prince Asiel offered his gifts of compassion, love, and fortitude by being an example of these tenets for others to glean from and to amplify within themselves. His extraordinary life will forever be remembered as he sought to bring rays of joy, glimmers of hope, and beams of love to nations as he was living his life his way. On August 21st, 2022, Prince Asiel, man extraordinaire, who was preceded in death by his parents, six of his siblings, Gloria, Calvin, Gladys, Elaine, Archie, Sterling, his wife, Havana, and son, Yehuda, transitioned from this life becoming pure spirit. 
he leaves to forever recall his extraordinary life. His adored wives, Joanna, Shalamia, Shalgia, and his beloved sons and daughters, Tina, Lisa, Lester, Lori, Mark, Maria, Kananya, R.L., Prachia, Yatmi, Tzfuna, Uval, Yosef, Batsion, and Shemaiah, Elronane, Mikal, Asiel, Uriel, and Esther. His circle of more than 60 grandchildren and great-grandchildren. His loving sister, Aunt Lily Pipkins. His forever heart sister, Yifa, Dr. Tony Luck. A host of nieces and nephews and a cherished community of family and friends in all states of America, Israel, Africa, and throughout the world. His Excellency, Prince Asiel ben Israel, a true son of the soil, lived his life his way. May his example of service to God and God's people continue to inspire us to create a better world. Well done, good and faithful servant, loving, submitted by the family of Prince Asiel in Israel. We love you. Man extraordinaire. We also lost our Prince Asiel's namesake, Ben Asiel, and we want to remember his life as well, uh, a life that was a legacy. I'm trying to make sure I have not forgotten anyone before I call our special, special speaker I want to make sure that I have not missed anyone to recognize you. I missed someone. Come, come on. Who did I miss? All right, so this is... Aliza, Maria, Esther, El Elion, where's El Renane? These are just a few of the wonderful s s children of Prince Asiel would like to share some words with you. So to our siblings that we are here with today and for those who are in Israel, there are millions of individuals that walk around every day pondering the great mystery of life. What is our purpose? But for those of us who dare to contend with Yah and allow him to prevail, we are called Israel. And this great prince wrestled with God, and on August 21st, he yet again let Yah prevail, and in doing so, he ascended to his next assignment, seemingly leaving a great void. But if it came from God, it came with a plan, and our father has always been an angel with a plan. He left us a blueprint of what his legacy would sound like, what his legacy would look like, and what his legacy would feel like. So we say to our brothers and sisters, now and in the coming weeks, when you sit and ponder the mystery of life, 
Let it be forever known that embedded in the name of everything is its purpose. And our Father embedded in each and every one of us, our purpose. As Dr. Mason said, our names are the names of the Hebrew language. Those names have meanings. Those names are not the names of the slave masters that we carry. Our father took pride in calling us every day from our names. Um, he would call me every morning and he would say, I need my cup of joy, which is Aliza. He would call Ahava his love child. He would say, please call my angel. We knew our L was on his way. When he said, Maria, the master teacher, every time she tried to teach him and give him wisdom on the things that she wanted him to know. When he said, Uval, you are the running waters that run through me. He said, Tahir, she shall shine her light. And that is something she does every day. He said, Yat me. He loved to say, Yat me, Tami. He said, <laughs> he would always say, the endure, the perseverance, and he would serve Yah. Our baby brother, who was El Rene, God has made a joyful melody. He had made the firstborn, Tina, a river that flows. Tina, our oldest sister. Asiel, our brother who carried his name, creation, in his name, for his name's sake. So throughout all the names of his children, I'm sorry, Yosef, Yosef, who represented us so well today, who spoke so well of our father and gave us so much. Yosef, abundance, Yah will increase. He was one who was favored, as you see, immensely. Mikal, our sister, she was the queen. My mother was also named queen as well, but Mikal carried that name also. So every day, the blueprint that we carry through our names, our souls, and our spirits, we will continue his legacy. <laughs> our names are just not names, they are spirits. We will continue. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. In the of God. My mother, a Muslim follower of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, a student of the Honorable Middle Brother, Minister Louis Farrakhan, taught me that name was Allah, who appeared in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. My father, Prince Asiel bin Israel, a Hebrew, taught me that name was Yahweh Kadosh Yah Yisrael. But I stand here, irrespective to what name we call upon, the oneness of God is what's most significant. It was the oneness of God that motivated my father to be a great but instrumental galvanizer of men and women to bring them back to the spirit of God, to the land of God, to the power of God. It was the oneness of God that irrespective to what house of worship that he came into, to what your ideological perspectives were, that he was able to see, touch, and activate the God within you. It was the oneness of God that produced me. It was the oneness of God that brought us all together and the oneness of God in which his work was motivated upon. I say that because my father, who touched us all, and I want to for a moment thank every single person who personally and collectively to my family sent their condolences. But for those who I've spoken to, I extended my condolences to all of you because 
We did not personally suffer a loss. We collectively did. Prince Asiel, I praise this dude. Prince Asiel, it's just not my or my siblings' personal father. He was a father and brother to us all. He was a father and brothers to us all. But I stand before you, though I am in mourning, though we are in mourning, not in grief. For grief is for those who wish they would have had more time, wish they would have done something different. We stand before you knowing that our father, our brother, our friend gave us all that he had. So we are at peace, brother minister. Though it is hard. The burden of death sometimes seems insurmountable. But it's the spirit of God that guides us through this. It's the teachings that that man of God was able to activate something different in us. I want to, on behalf of my family, thank our mayor, Mayor Lori Lightfoot, the Council of General's Office of Israel, Congressman Donnie, Danny Davis and Senator Donnie Trotter, pardon me, all of those who are of high esteem, his personal friend, Reverend Henry Hardy, Pastor T.L. Barrett, and the host of this beautiful sanctuary, Reverend Otis Moss. But I must, and I'm going to use my father's words, his big brother, his friend, his teacher, the Honorable Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan, who he loved so, so, so much. See, I've been privileged to sit in the room with those two and to see the reverence and love and respect that my father has for that man gives me another sense of purpose because as black men, we've been taught to be envy of those who are great. We've been taught to be a little apprehensive because when somebody's light is so bright, we think it dims ours. But my father lived on a principle that strong men don't fear strong men. I, I won't be long, Dr. Luck. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I love to preach, too. <laughs> Just like my daddy, sir. He taught me well. But I say this, brother minister. My father stood with you in 1977 when you took on the work of resurrecting the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and bringing back our nation. And as my father did up until his last breath, his post is not abandoned because, brother, we stand with you in truth. And when I heard how he talked to his children and said beautiful words to you, and you are a beautiful family. He gave you a purpose for your life. And sometimes we run away from our purpose when we find out how difficult the, the road is. But peace carries with it a promise and an Fa uh, uh, a factor of great difficulty. God is not an easy one to submit to because he knows it all and we know so little. So many of us want God's way to be ours. We don't want to give him the right to choose the way for us. So sometimes he has to whip us into submission, and that's so easy for him to do. But the beauty of the prince and the beauty of the saints, you heard the word, you loved what you heard and you submitted your life.
to live that word. Because it is only in living the word, not preaching it, but you preach the word by living the word. So the prince was just what my dear sister said he, he, he was a man. And I hollered out, yeah, that's what God made. God didn't make Negroes. He didn't make colored people. He made a man. So when God makes you a man, you are his man. And the prince was his man. And as I look at you and marvel over the love that I see and heard in all of us for this wonderful, wonderful man of God. He came to me one day and he said, Farrakhan, uh, I'd like to take you to Israel. I said, really? <laughs> I, I'm in a lot of trouble with those people, but, but I, 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 I'm happy that, that you want to take me there. And he took me to Israel. He took me to Demona. I said, wow, these people loved us so much they had a uh, nuclear reactor in Demona. So they thought that they were settling the saints in a terrible place that would give them hell, but they turned hell into heaven. Because when they planted you there, they had to realize that God was with you. So when I met Rabbi Ben-Ami and I experienced the life of the saints for real, I knew Rabbi was a special man. And I will always love him. But he had a special man by his side. And that special man was your husband, your father, one of the great, great lives of our time who helped Rabbi Ben Ami to become the great one that he became, but it was the work of Asiel Ben Israel that made the whole world know Rabbi. And then he brought us there to meet Rabbi Ben Ami. And when we met the saints, we all came back to hell, I mean America, and we had a song to sing, we had a word to say about what we found in Demona, and for that I will always, always love the saints. I will always thank Allah for the day that the prince brought me to Israel. But uh, I, uh, I was worried. Because sometimes as brothers, we forget how close we are and sometimes we let Satan have his way coming between us. 
Nasik was hurt. But I talked to my brother and I didn't want him fighting his teacher. Because I've lived that life with Brother Malcolm turning away from Elijah Muhammad and saying ugly things about him. And he was looking for me to follow him. But when you meet a teacher, you honor your teacher. And if the teacher does something that dishonors himself, you always remember what you learned and who you learned it from. <laughs> and ICL wanted the union of the saints. So when he went back to Israel, I heard from Pastor Luck that uh, there was a big turnout for the prince. Did, did you tell me that, sis? Oh, she's coming to get me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me close. Far short of three hours, but with this, there's only one life giver, and that is the almighty creator by whatever name you call him. When you give birth, you are not the creator of what you brought forth. Allah says in the Quran, I created you in the womb. And one of you is a believer and the other is a disbeliever. Some of us are born to disagree with God. That's bad. So when you have submitted, now this is a beautiful family, yes, and I know you've been through a lot, but if you fall down and you learn why you fell down and you pick yourself back up and say, hallelujah, then your fall was the beginning of your rise. I close. The purpose of your life is given in the gifts that the God gave you. And you always want to know what's my purpose? What's my purpose? But you find your purpose when you understand your nature and try to live your nature. And nature don't have a name as such. So we call it a religion. I don't like that word. Because religion got us all upset and divided and hateful of each other. No. The Quran says it like this. Set your face for religion being upright. The nature made by Allah in which he has created man. That is the right religion, but most people know not. You never were converted. You were born the righteous, born in the nature of God. So people put names on it. God didn't call it Christianity. No, he didn't. 
So now we say we're Christian and we're disliking each other. Or I'm a Muslim. Or I'm a, a Hebrew. Or a Jew. But if you set your face for religion, a religion that is rooted in the nature of God. And then he says, that is the right religion. And he gives it to everyone who he's the creator of. He gives you his nature. And Satan has been busy twisting nature. Some of us don't know what we are because Satan has us so confused. But your nature is righteousness. That's why I don't like his way. He did it God's way. He practiced righteousness. He practiced good. He practiced treating everyone the way he would like to be treated. There ain't no better religion than that. So I'm going to sit down before I'm sat down. <laughs> but I love you. And I love what my brother has done that you are a witness of. The family of this great prince has to be the new leadership of the future of the nation of Israel. So rise up and take your place and speak love to your father, love to our brother, and do good in his name. Thank you for listening and thank you for allowing me the privilege to be here with you. And because you are the prince, you need to understand there's a destiny on your consciousness. You can no longer be or do what you were doing. This is a watershed experience. This is a cosmic encounter. When we talk about changing, this is a spiritual metamorphosis, if you will. And the Bible says that, that, that this man called now Prince went forth. Well, some writers say, well, it couldn't have been the name over given away totally because we know the 12 tribes of Jacob and the 12 tribes. So one writer said, maybe in addition to Jacob, your name shall be called Israel. That's just a little intellectual context, so I don't want you to think I know what I'm talking about. But the Bible says that here they are, this man in the wilderness, becoming the prince of the realm, becoming one who is a leader, and the tribe, the 12, ain't after him. There's a legacy you're talking about, the sea dynamic, if you will. So here I am today talking about my brother, Prince Osiel. When he, he left, you know, his name was Warren, as I've heard. But just like he met an encounter, and that encounter was a transition. It was a metamorphosis. It was a, a movement from to an elevation to. And the Bible says that if you can do that, then you are a person who has some degree of conviction that you are God's child of purpose. So Prince Asiel, Warren Brown, that's what I want to say. He was Warren Brown. But when he became the prince, prince, power, man with purpose, but he was not ACL. ACL means something else. I heard the children talking about the name, what it means. And the leisure, you're talking about all of these names. But now nobody told me what ACL meant. ACL means a creature, a creator, a, a, that which is created by, it's made by God, formed 
owned by God. The highest level. So Prince Asiel means formed by God. And because you are formed by God, you are called to somehow externalize and symbolize and emulate and imitate the veracity and the virtue of the cosmic I am. And the powerful, purposeful reality. Prince Asiel, who moved from being Warren Brown, now I'm Asiel, I am formed by God. If you're formed by God, you can't lay in the cut talking about but, but, but in that same old rut. If you're formed by God, you got to stand up and talk up and walk up and be up and act up and live up if you're formed by God. You ain't going to whine, you're going to refine. You ain't going to give up, you're going to gear up. You ain't going to talk what you can't do. I can do all things through the power of God and the Christ consciousness. We are called to the kingdom for such a time as this. Thank you.